This is Joe and Christopher. I got some big news from Microsoft today uh, coming your way involving open book Microsoft exams. So this is going to be some really exciting news and I want to go over the details with you. Let's get started. Now as we get into this, I hope you'll give me a like and a subscribe. I'm trying really hard to grow this channel so I can keep giving free content. I've also been uh, occasionally giving away some of my courses for free for anybody that is a subscriber. So I hope you'll give me a like and a subscribe. Now if you have been taking Microsoft exams in the last 30 years, you may be aware that one of the biggest complaints that people have had is the fact that it seems like you're having to memorize crazy commands or little small details of information that in the real world, if you were to run into the types of problems that these exam questions are going over, you would be able to look these facts up. And so that has been a complaint that Microsoft has heard countless times over the last three decades. And they finally decided to address that. So they just made this announcement uh, a little while ago. You might have heard this, you may might not have heard it, but Microsoft is finally supporting, well, what they're calling open book. It's more like open learn website. Uh, so if you're not aware of it, Microsoft has their learn website, Microsoft's learn website, learn.microsoft.com, and they are now going to allow you to visit this website while you're taking the exams and you'll basically be able to look stuff up. Now there's some caveats to all that and that's the type of thing that we need to get into. The first thing I want to look at is some of the uh, the rules and, and all of that of this and then we're going to take a look at what it's going to look like. All right. So the, the first thing to be aware of, so here's what you need to know about the new resource. You will have access to everything in learn.microsoft.com except Q&A in your profile. Now, um, the reason why you're not going to get access to the Q&A, the questions and answers, is because people would be going on there and posting exam questions and people would be answering those exam questions and of course that's not going to work. That kind of defeats the purpose of it. So you can kind of see why Microsoft would do that. There's some technical reasons for uh, why they um, they are not allowing you to access your profile. Uh, I watched an interview with the the person who who is over all of this, and that's what this person was saying. Uh, the now here's the here's a big one. You do not get extra time. Extra time will not be added. So that is a, a big deal, and I'm going to elaborate on why that's such a big deal here in just a moment. The next is the exam timer will continue as you uh, search learn. So again, that kind of makes sense. They're not, ex they're not adding extra time, nor are they pausing the timer while you go in and take a look at the learn website. This resource is only available on role-based exams, not fundamentals. Okay, that's kind of a big deal. Okay, so some of the exams are uh, uh, role-based and then some are fundamentals. If I, if I go over to my own site, which is examlabpractice.com slash courses, uh, you can see that there are some fundamental exams like the AI900, which I just released actually. Um, shameless plug, I actually do have a coupon code going on right now for anybody watching this video. Or you can always see if I have a coupon code at examlabpractice.com slash courses. But the AI900 exam, which is all about artificial intelligence, um, this is a great exam, however, it's a fundamentals exam. So you will not uh, have access to the learn materials there. You will not have access to learn materials on any of the fundamental exams. So any exam that's labeled fundamentals like AZ900, MS900, SC900, a lot of that are fundamental exams and you will not have access to the learn uh, website. Now you might say, why? Why is that? Because a lot of those exams are um, just knowing definitions and knowing terminology. They're not scenario based and uh, Microsoft feels like you would be able to very quickly just look up the answers through the Learn website without even um, you know having to dig or anything. It'd just be right, th right there for you. And the goal of this, the thing that they're really trying to push here is that this is not meant to, to be something for you to spend your whole exam looking up things. This is just a quick reference. So that's one of the things I want to talk about that's really a benefit. Okay, To me, 
you know, one of the big things that's on a lot of these uh, more advanced Microsoft exams is you get into AZ-104, AZ-305, um, pretty much all of the non-fundamental exams, you have to be able to look certain minute details up. One of the biggest is PowerShell, um, PowerShell commands. You might forget what a specific PowerShell command does, and you might have to look that up. Well, you can very easily do that. I can go over here right now, and I can say, oh, well, you know, how, how, what is the, uh, let's say, new dash msol user command. That's kind of a, an older command, but I can go right here, and, I, and there it is. There's a, it is as a reference. Oh, look, there's the license options, too. So I can click on that, and I can look up this as a reference. I can look at examples. I mean, that's invaluable. That's really helpful, okay, that you can do that. So to me, that's going to be one of the biggest benefits to uh, having access to this, okay? Um, this resource will be available in the same language in which the exam is available. So whatever language you're taking the exam in, the, the Learn website resource will also be available in that same language, okay? Now let's take a look at what this actually is going to look like, all right? Um, so here is an example question that they've got. So this is just a regular question that you would, you would see on the test. And at that point, you have this option right here, this little button you can click, Microsoft Learn. You can click that button and it's gonna pull this up on the side of your screen like this. All right, and so that's kind of nice. You'll be able to basically see the question on the left. You'll have the Learn website on the right. And from there, you um, you can actually, by the way, you can move the slider bar uh, left or right. So if you need more real estate on the left or more real estate on the right for what you're looking at, you can totally do that, all right? Uh, the other thing is you can have multiple tabs at the same time. That's fantastic. So that's really, really nice. So I can have multiple uh, tabs open at the same time if I need to. Again, if I was looking up some facts and I needed to be able to kind of reference back and forth of those really fast, I can do that. Okay, um, here's an example of them just kind of moving it over to the left or to the right. And the other thing is you can go full screen, all right? So if you're, you know, you're one of those people you just really like to have it up in full screen because that's kind of how you're used to looking at it, you can do that. You can also click to return to your question anytime you want. So you can see that's very easy. It's very intuitive, very uh, user friendly, I feel like. Uh, now, the Learn website is locked down. And again, if we go back to our facts on this, that's one of the things they tell you right here in the very first bullet. You, you can access everything in the Learn website except the Q&A and profile. So you will not be able to go to Google, okay, or any of that. I think you probably could have expected that though, right? They're not gonna let you do all that. So you will get an access denied if you try to go somewhere that is not, um, not supported, okay? They're not gonna, from what I understand, they're not gonna count points off if you try to go somewhere you're not supposed to um, and all that. Now you might also be asking the question, when does this take effect? Now, it's already been taken effect. So supposedly uh, most of the exams have already began supporting this as of right now. Okay, um, and so uh, rest assured, the majority of the exams that are out there, you should be able to um, get to those uh, or get to the Learn website and review the material. Okay, now let's, again, I've already talked about a little bit of the upside to this. The upside to this is I can, I can look, up, look stuff up relatively quickly, relatively easily. I can do the search. I can even look up a specific, specific exam Okay, if I was taking the uh, the AZ-305 exam, for example, all right, I can go here and they've got details about that. I can go and actually look at some of the reading material uh, on it, but here is the biggest catch, and this is where I want to warn you, you got to be careful, all right? Um, you can burn so much time going through and trying to look stuff up, and this is what Microsoft is trying to get across to you. Since the timer does not pause, you need to be aware of the fact that you can't really expect to use this resource to help you answer every question. You're going to burn way too much time. Okay, so you still got to learn it. You still, I would still highly recommend taking some courses and, and learn the material and take courses and actually get this down. I would highly recommend that. Um, that's, so don't, don't expect this to, to uh, hold your hand through the process. 
you want to consider this more as a way of, of look, being able to look something up quickly as a reference. Some of these crazy little, you know, minute details that you, you might forget. Don't expect to be able to spend a lot of time on that. All right, now I'm going to give you a big tip. My advice on this, okay, when you're taking the exam, you have got a review for later button. Okay, review later. What I would always advise students to do, every time you come across a question like that where you feel like I'm going to have to look something up in the Learn website, I would just mark that for review and save it for the end of your exam. Okay, If you have, let's say you have two and a half hours to take your test, okay, and it takes you an hour and a half just to run through all the exam questions and, and answer all the ones that you don't need to look up anything. Now let's say you've marked, let's say you've marked 10 questions, okay, and it took you an hour and a half to answer all the other questions. So you have 10 questions left, you have an hour left, because let's say you have two and a half hours to take the test, you have an hour left. Now you know just how much time you can spend on, um, on answering those questions, okay. Now I might actually put together another video on some more tips like that, but that's my number one tip for you answer all the questions you can answer, go straight through the test one time, click review on any question you think you're going to need to use the learn reference for, and then um, come back at the end, and now you know, okay, well, I got an hour left, so you know approximately how much time you can spend on each individual question, and that is going to be a very time efficient way to do things, okay? All right, well, I hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, I really would appreciate it if you would give me a like and subscribe. I give away promo codes to my courses all the time. I give away free courses on here all the time. Um, again, examlabpractice.com slash courses has always got my latest coupon code where you can purchase. I've got a $9.99 deal going on right now for most of my courses, and I hope you guys will check that out. All right. Well, uh, again, hope this has been informative to you, and I'll keep on pushing out this content, and I hope you enjoy it.